Hi, welcome to the Shower Doctor's live stream on pumps. We are, we're in um, we're in what we usually use as a studio for doing our sort of help help videos, but we've got so many pumps that I really needed a bit more space than doing this from behind the desk. So if you like what we're doing, just give us a thumbs up and um, we'll get on with trying to explain a little bit about the different types of pumps and how they work. This is not meant to be in any way in depth, but it should give you a good idea of what the different pumps are for and what they do. So probably what we'll do is start kind of at the bottom end of the pumps and move our way up to the bigger pumps, and then I'll explain really how the two main pumps work. We have this kind of thing here, which is just a pump with an, or an ordinary shower with a hot and cold going and what this does is it just boosts the pressure a little bit inside. Fairly normal little pump. This motor is used extensively in some of the other um, some of the other pumps uh, that have uh, you know for an electric shower and that kind of thing. So a fairly normal little motor. And then we go on to this kind of thing, which is really regarded as a shower pump. But this has been cut away, so I can pretty much show you what all the bits are for. And all of the other pumps really have the same kind of parts inside them. So they've always got a circuit board mounted, usually on the top, sometimes on the side, but usually on the top. Inside, they've got the motor very similar to the motor in the first shower I showed you. And at the end, the actual pump with the elements inside here and the impeller that, uh, that uh, drives the, the pressure and builds up the pressure in the water. So that's the, the basic structure of the pump. This is a regenerative pump. So the water comes in here, Gets, gets twirled around and gets blasted out the other end. Once again, a fairly fairly small pump and and really does a job. It would probably do do a shower and maybe it might do a bathroom, but you kind of be pushing it for that. So this is a regen pump. This type of pump here, which I should have got started with first, which is centrifugal. So the water comes in here, it gets spun round and gets forced out the out the outlets. I'm going to explain a little bit about how they how they different, the regenerative and the centrifugal pump works in a few minutes. We then get to this kind of thing, a brass pump. This is much more heavy duty. So this is a three mark pump, so a fairly powerful pump made of brass. Now, the, whether they're made of brass or plastic, the actual pump, is pretty much up to, your, up to yourself if you're buying the, the pump. There's not a huge amount of difference. The plastics now are so good that it's not necessary to think. In the past, brass pumps were always better. That is not necessarily the case anymore. So this is a, um, a regenerative brass pump. Finally, we get to this kind of thing, which looks a bit of a brute, but it's the same sort of thing. It has the circuit board in the top, the pump's at either end, but this has a pressure vessel on it. And this is now called a universal pump. Some of the other ones have two smaller vessels, one in the hot and one in the cold. The latest ones are now mounting the, best, the, the pressure vessel down in the side here. They, they say it takes up less room. But it's always the same. Turn the tap on, senses the flow. The flow um, drops, whenever the, the pressure drops in the, in the pressure vessel, the, uh, it, it senses that, the pump starts to run and it will keep running turn the tap off and it builds up the pressure again and once it senses the pressure is fully up then the pump shuts off. What we really need to do now is discuss the two normal methods for a pump to work. So what we'll do is just put this to the side. This is a regenerative pump. So what happens is the water comes in and then we have this, the impeller, and it fits in here. Um, and what happens is as the water goes in, it spins and it grabs, and I think in this case it would be the other way round, it grabs just a tiny little bit of water, spins it round, and the force of it spinning it round shoots it back up and out the other side. So what happens here is the water goes in the centre this time, it gets spun round and gets thrown out the outlet pipe. Um, it's, once again, it's a fairly simple thing, but they, this tends to be quieter, although if there's air getting into the system, these are much more sensitive to, you know, to a bit of abuse. And so this is what happens inside the impeller as it goes spinning round. What it's doing is grabbing the water and throwing it to the outside. So it's a much, much quieter way to, to, to use the pump. Um, and it's, it's, you know, as you can see, that the bits fit together like this and you can have multiple elements on these throwing the water further and further on to get great, create more and more pressure. But effectively, 
the water goes in the middle and because of these veins inside it gets thrown to the outside edge and, um, and that's what creates the pressure in this type of, in this type of pump. But we had some questions um, you know, that have come in over the last two or three weeks just about other subjects. The first one is from Sandy M and I'll read it out. I have a Myra Advance ATL thermostatic shower. The light comes on when the cord is pulled but both the water pressure button and the on-off button uh, light up blue. The on-off button flashes and the warning lights for the uh, water pressure and reset do not light up. I have tried resetting the shower but nothing works. There is obviously electricity getting to the shower and then the water um, and then the water is running to the property. Have I any ideas? The, the problem I think you have is you clearly got electricity going to the shower but I suspect that you may not be getting 240 volts to it. It's quite common because obviously all the neons are lighting up, but whenever you try to draw actually draw some power, the, the, the power supply is failing. So it may be you've got a faulty switch, you know, the one-off switch, the isolation switch. So you need to you need to check that you're actually when the shower's getting switched on, you're actually getting 240 volts going to. You may find if you put the tester in, it tests 240 volts, switch the shower on, and all of a sudden the power will just drop. So try that, that's, a, that's the first thing to maybe have a go at. And the next one is Gambler. Uh, he is a Triton Aquatronic 3 Plus and it is leaking water from the thermal cutout that is located at the bottom of the heater tank. The bottom TCO is connected with two blue wires. The TCO costs around £20. Uh, do I need to buy a new shower? Well, no, not really. That it's really, really unusual for one of these TCOs to leak because it's, it's just held in with a, a static neoprene o-ring. So just check the leak is actually coming from there. It's not impossible. I have seen a long time ago one of these leaking. It, really what happened is that the, uh, the two blue wires that are connected to it hadn't been crimped on properly. The thing had overheated and not melted but it distorted and the water started coming out through that. It's probably worth repairing because the shower itself will be okay. Just a faulty TCO. And these TCOs, I've seen a few of them have you know, burn out, but not many of them leak. So, hi, you have some very useful videos. I have a Myra Avent XS that runs too hot. Uh, do you know if there's anything you can adjust to mix the hot and cold? Well, there is a mixing valve inside the XS, but probably the thing to look at with the Myra XS is on the inlets there are two filters. It may be that the filters are blocked, so if there's not enough water getting through the filters, then it's probably um, not able to balance the water properly and it may be that um, it, it, that's why it's running hot. It could be the uh, the valve itself that's causing the problem. There's two types of mixing valve in there. There's a manual mixing valve and a thermostatic mixing valve. If, if it's faulty, it's likely to be the thermostatic mixing valve. But whatever you do, the first thing is to check the filters because that uh, that costs you nothing to do that. So just it's a little cap, one screw We'll turn the water off first obviously, unscrew the cap and there's two um, two filters inside that like, they're like little pipes. If they're blocked that's where your problem is. So I think that's about it. All I can say is thank you for watching. If you like this uh, these videos, subscribe, come back the next time we're doing a live stream. Watch on Facebook or Twitter and we'll advertise then when it's likely to be. It's not something we can do every week, it takes time to set all this stuff up, a bit of thinking's involved as well. So yeah, so give us a thumbs up, like us or do whatever, but uh, and subscribe and come back and join us the next time. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time.